Jeez. Hassle, man. I'll tell you what. This has been a little hard to get on. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is. So, um, today I am going to be disassembling this set of four carbs. Um, so that they can be cleaned and rebuilt and reinstalled. I've got rebuild kits for all of them. And, um, it's just kind of a good practice, regardless, to uh, get them all redone so that, uh, you know, the bike will run well. And, uh, got this box here that I'm going to put all the parts in as they come apart. There are quite a few parts. So, we will, uh, I guess, start with... Uh, Start with the lids, I guess. Take those off. It might take a hot minute, because there are a lot of parts involved here, and I'm gonna try and keep them very organized if possible. Alright, the lid and the spring. So what I can do is kind of try and keep these things like in the same order that they came out in theory so these are what are known as um, CV carbs they're vacuum controlled and this right here is the slide it's controlled by vacuum and uh, the diaphragm makes it go up and down they are uh, Pretty reliable, which is nice. Actually, just kind of like I'm gonna put these guys off to the side one at a time. Hey, Ari, how you doing? Yeah, just starting to take apart these carburetors. Just getting it done, you know. I was wondering if anybody was gonna come in because first time I tried to start the uh, stream, it was all janky, as is typical with. Uh, Twitch and trying to do mobile, but uh, I think we got it. This guy's gonna go right here. So I'm taking this all apart and I'm gonna be cleaning it and then putting it back together to get reinstalled on the bike. This is a four carburetor system. And each carb provides fuel and air to one of the four pistons. Because that bike is a four piston system. I moved over into the shade today because it was so goddamn hot yesterday. The thing you gotta watch out for these is these look like they're in really good shape. So I'm very happy with that. No problems. I kind of keep everything organized because that's where things are going to get sketchy. It's actually, uh, yeah, it was pretty hot yesterday. It's a little cool right now because it's, uh, it's uh, still relatively early. Um, I went and bought a lawnmower today. See, it's over there. Cool, uh, 
battery operated lawnmower which is awesome it's super quiet so I can do the uh, do the lawn early when everybody's still sleeping and not have to worry about waking them up yeah so far these all look pretty good no holes or anything like that, which is ideally what you're trying to avoid. How hot is it there? Now, something that I found out about these cars... Oh, Jesus, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, last year we had... Uh, in June, we had one day that it was 118. It's the hottest day ever here. Gross. So, uh, one thing that I found out about uh, these these uh, carburetors is if you look at... Uh, if you look at the end carbs versus the center ones, the end ones, at least at one point, were shiny and the middle ones aren't. Apparently that's just because it's cheaper to not chrome the ones on the outside. Um, it, you know, a company like Honda that makes a billion... Oh, God, gross, 97. Disgusting. company like Honda that makes that much money. But, you know, they still want to save where they can, so... You can't see those ones from the, from the outside because of the gas tank, so I guess they figured, fuck it, we'll save a couple bucks. So those are all out. Next thing we will do is, let's see, I'll flip this over. I'll work on the bottom side. These are the, uh, the bowls where the gas lives. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, you need the real star? Ricky, come here. Ricky. Rick. Ricky, come here. Hey. Come here. Your people want to see you. Come on. Get over here. What are you doing? Come here. Come on, Papa. What are you doing, Ricky? Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? What are you doing, Papa? Yeah. What a good puppy. What a good puppy. Why don't you go lay down in the grass? I cut the grass so you could lay down. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. Hi, Bobo. You watching? He's a good boy. He is a good boy. So I'm removing the carburetor bowls. These guys hold the fuel and the floats are inside, which control how fast the fuel is a El Floto. So these are actually in pretty nice shape. It's not uncommon for you to find these totally filled with old fuel, disgusting grossness. And then, uh, we can come back to this, I guess. We'll show you all of them. The interior port parts of it. I'm kind of trying to do this in a, uh, you know, use a little bit of a system so that when I put them back together, it's not too uh, confusing. Although, there are an awful lot of parts. Ricky needs Brock Brock and Ricky needs a goat. Where the hell? Oh, there he is. He's over there. Ricky. Laying down under the tree. He'd be pretty funny if he had a GoPro. So, uh, like, these gaskets will all be replaced 
I have replacement kits for all of these so I'll have all new gaskets and o-rings and what have you yeah I might have to strap it to him one day just to see what happens you guys can get like an up close view of him eating cat poop which is his favorite pastime Yes, kids. Eh. That's all for. Right. It's got a little bit of a little bit of gunk in the bottom. So what I'll do is once I'm. Uh, once I get this all apart, I'll put all the parts in an ultrasonic cleaner that will, in theory, clean them all up very nice. Yeah, I mean, Ken was talking about wanting to get a motorcycle. We should just find a Lego motorcycle kit and she can build her own. pretty good though so I'm pretty happy about that so those are float bowls typically this is actually upside down right now so when this is working you can see the float bowls will come down so it sits like this and the fuel will come in and the floats if I can hold it will rise and then they have little uh, little plugs on them and once the fuel level reaches a specific level it automatically shuts off the fuel so that uh, it's not small enough. So the fuel shuts off. And these guys are held in by little pins. And then that guy right there. This is what turns the, uh, the fuel off and on as the float goes up and down. It raises this up and down out of a little orifice in that hole and turns the fuel off. Put that in there. Put this guy over here. Yeah, like a toilet. Exactly. I just want to make sure that the, all the little uh, springs are working. This carb is actually in really, really amazing condition. I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm wondering if maybe somebody might have already rebuilt it once, but hard to say. Because it's really nice. I, I've had some really bad ones. And this one is uh, pretty outstanding. those and last one of these Looks like I just love to fall off all right not entirely true I mean the bike only has 18,000 miles on it which means I mean you know that's that's nothing at all for any vehicle, really. So what's next is all of these brass pieces are what's known as the jets. And they're what control how much gas can go down into this area of the carb. Basically, the way a carb works is gas is put into this area. And then as the air is forced through, the gas is atomized and it's put into the into the uh, into the cylinder and that's what actually explodes so this is these top little guys these are main jets 
and then what's underneath those are called emulsion tubes and right back here these are idle jets and basically all all of these systems are called circuits and the idle circuit is what controls your fuel input during the very lowest portion of of your motor running and then that's what a jet looks like so the fuel comes in through the bottom and it's sprayed out through these little tiny holes on the side so as i'm cleaning this i'm just going to make sure that all of these jets are immaculately clean because that is what makes your bike run nice so what i'm removing right now are the idle jets Yes, explosions. Tiny explosions. We'll keep all these together. Where did I put that one? There we go. And then this one. I'll just do two at once because keep flipping it over anyway and because these are brass you have to be very careful not to uh, you know you want to have the screwdriver set in really well so that you don't accidentally twist off the uh, the slot slot the bike is right over there and that is an 83 Honda CB650 Nighthawk. And it, by the way, hi Stacy. <laughs> so good to see you, hon. Um, and uh, yeah, basically in the process of just rebuilding the entire thing. And a lot of that has to do with, uh, let's see if I can, do I have a wrench that'll fit this? The, uh, the main jet and the emulsion tube basically are right on top of each other oh man i need a i need a seven a millimeter a seven millimeter wrench which i can't find so what i'm gonna do is just see if i can do this without destroying it it's not pretty right now but it was you know it's pretty this is pretty hey ricky what are you doing baba say hi to stacy this is stacy's first time here that's ricky hi ricky what are you doing, Papa? Who's my good boy? Yeah. What are you doing? Go ahead and go lay down. I'm working right now. So because I don't have a uh, seven millimeter wrench, I'm just gonna see if I can't do this without screwing it up. Eh. Careful. gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a hassle I don't know I really don't want to have to go tear my house apart and try and find a seven millimeter wrench because it is going to be problematic Let's see if we see this. there we go so that's loose let's just loosen them all up real quick Hey guys, uh, a hungry dinosaur is Stacy. She is a streamer friend of mine who's sweet as, oh, see now, see that right there? That's what I'm avoiding. It's trying to uh, get that in there. There we go. Um, she streams um, I guess the best way to explain it would be uh, she has kind of a feel-good stream, uh, mental health consciousness type thing. You know, basically just uh, someplace where people can... Excuse me, loud motorcycle. Uh, somewhere where people can come and, and 
feel safe, you know, like a lot of people do these days, but it's kind of like what the thrust of her, her stream is. And she is a sweetheart. So I'm getting all these main jets off of here. And I'll show you one of those. The main jet itself is really tiny. Just a single hole. See that one I actually buggered up a little bit. These actually might, there might be replacements in the kit as well. So I might just go ahead and replace them. But we will see. So there's all the, the mains. And then these guys, we're gonna go ahead and just, so we can't get them out. These are the emulsion tubes. So as the, uh, as the fuel is let into, from the bowl into, into, the, into the main body of the, the uh, carburetor, it is dispersed through these very tiny holes. So this is the, uh, the big brother of the idle circuit. <laughs> I'm fine. Can't get freaked out over this stuff because you start to, you start freaking out and you make mistakes and you really can't afford to make, I mean, you know, it's relative. Can you afford? You know, if you make certain kinds of mistakes, it can cost you a lot of money because you have to replace parts. They can be they can be pretty hard. This particular bike was only made for two years, 1982 or uh, 1983 and 1984. The uh, the Nighthawk line was made for quite a few years, but uh, this particular model was uh, only for two years. All right, so we've got those out, and what I'm also going to do is pop out the uh, emulsion jet. There's a little uh, little thing in here. These can be kind of a hard thing to get out. Let's see if I can't get them to pop out. Oh, there we go. That guy's out. There's little uh, little jet seats in the bottom of these. And uh, that's where that needle right here sits into. So all four of those out. So basically the way it sets up is this is the emulsion tube. That sits on top of this. The needle comes into here and controls the amount of fuel that can be put through here into the main jet and into the emulsion tube. So that's what that is. All right, so we have Oh, where'd you go? All the jets are out. Are you metal? Magnetic, huh? I want to just keep everything in the right spots. Okay. So, next we're going to take out... Let's see, we'll take this guy out. This is your idle jet screw. Or not your, it's your idle screw. This controls, uh, so basically all, th all four of these carbs are controlled by your throttle. So you have a throttle cable that comes down one side and another one that comes down the other side. So that's throttle up and then throttle down. The uh, throttle down is controlled by a spring. So that's all auto automatically gonna pop back. The only thing you're controlling is how open the throttle is. There's also a choke tube that comes down here and that attaches to these guys. And this basically, the choke will uh, control the amount of air that's getting into the mixture. So um, basically what this, will, this big knob does is it will raise or lower the idle of all of the carbs at once. So like if you need to, uh, you know, maybe your your bike is not running well at low RPMs, and you want to raise the idle a little bit so that it uh, 
so it's not falling down on its face, you can do that. So, let's see. We're getting pretty close to the part where we're going to be... The thing about this is we're going to be separating all these, and it can be a little bit cumbersome. So what we'll do first is we'll take off the chokes. <coughs> Pardon me. And a little bevy. Where's that dog? Hmm. I don't ever tr always trust him. <laughs> so let's see. We're going to go ahead and uh, take this apart. I'm going to take these guys out of here and give myself a little bit more room for uh, activities. Maybe grab a couple more of these here uh, separators. And uh, so I'll have more spots to put parts as necessary. I like these little boxes because they allow you to keep everything organized which I'm typically not very good at so I need all the help I can get all right so choke so we'll go ahead and take these screws off that's loose hmm interesting so these screws are gonna go right here Hello, sir. What you doing? Yeah, those screws were actually pretty, pretty loose, which is not, uh, not great. So now we are going to slide out this choke rod. And the thing about that is all these guys are going to want to move as we go. There's a spring here that I have to keep my eye on. Actually, I might take a picture of this real quick so I can see. One sec. So I can see what's going on. All right. Meanwhile, back to the stream. So I have a timer set for an hour because apparently that's how long my uh, battery lasts. So I'm gonna probably have to shut down in a little bit and uh, start over, which is super cool. But I mean, that's that's the uh, the brakes when you. Uh, you're streaming via GoPro so I just keep moving these over pull it out a little bit move these over pull it out a little more this is time consuming and annoying but it's the only way to do it and we're getting to point where the first one is going to slide out this would be a good time for some time lapse <laughs> Seems like it might just be these two right now and so this one is free for the most part so these, uh, I'll show you, you can see these little feet go up on to these little brass guys here. I'll show you what they do in a sec. So this, still can't quite make it. out guy can go 
That guy can go right there. Now I'm curious if these little plastic, there's these little plastic uh, bushings and they do come out, but I'm going to leave them in there for right now because I don't want to chase them around. Red finger, red thumb, red thumb. I'm getting there. consuming but it has to be done the thing about it is as clean as these carbs were I probably could have just like sprayed them out with some carb cleaner and popped them back in and been like well you know what maybe they'll be fine but if they're not you basically gotta take the whole damn thing apart again so I mean, I might as well just do it now while I've got the gas tank off and everything. And I'll save me uh save me some headache in the long run, hopefully. Alright, so now here's a spring. And that guy, I just want to keep an eye on it. Because I don't want it to fly anywhere. There it is, right there. So. I'm gonna take another quick picture of that because I really need to know how that guy is set up. sneaky mercs um yeah so continue to move I will uh, give you a advance warning that the stream is going to go down probably any minute I have a, a replacement battery ready for when that does occur but I can only get so much time out of a GoPro battery and uh, that's just the way it is. This, this screw, but I'll be right back. I mean, it's no biggie. At least this time I'm ready for it. After the last several times it's happened, I haven't noticed for a while. And I'm just like, where'd everybody go? It only takes me a second to change the battery, so. And then this is the, um, this is what attaches to the choke cable. So the cable goes in here, and as this pulls up, not only does it actuate this choke, but because of this bar, it actuates all of them at the exact same time. 
The drag about the battery going dead is, it's like, I can't, you can't pause the stream, apparently. I have, or at least I haven't figured out how to. Um, so if I have to change the battery, I have to shut down stream. So it is what it is. But it should be going any second because the timer is about to go off. In fact, maybe I'll go ahead and just change the battery right now. Give me two seconds. I mean, I don't know, actually. I mean, according to the battery, it says it's still half full. So I'm just going to hold off. And we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll. Uh... It's it's funny because I think this is actually the battery that I'm using right now is actually the uh, the OEM GoPro battery, and I think the uh, I think the aftermarket ones probably just aren't as good. All right, so now we can scoot this right out. Come on. Go. That doesn't want to come off of there, so this guy goes here. For some reason, that doesn't want to uh, come off the end there. There we go. There's our choke bar. That guy can go right across the back here. All right. So now we're going to take off the, or uh, take out the chokes. And those guys are, what, like a 13? Are they really a 14? They're a 14. Give me two seconds to grab one of those. Oh, oh, I'm getting old. Hi, Ricky. What are you doing? Do you want a snack? We can get you a snack. Come here. Uh, uh. Come on. What are you doing? Come on, we're going to go over here. You guys it? You good boy? You gonna lay down? You gonna lay down? Oh, there you go, boy. All right. So, uh, go ahead and get these guys out. Just loosen them all up real quick. Karen. You gotta be, you're on the internet. You're on the internet. Ah, you're on the internet. You're on the Twitch. All right. So. Get these chokes out of here. All right, so they consist of a cap. And a spring. And the choke itself. Get all these guys out. Ah, shit. 
That's that alarm I was talking about. Part spring. So, I mean, I mean, the nice part about this is, at very least, I can clean everything and it'll look a lot nicer on the bike. You know, you want everything to look nice. Those. Alrighty. So, now... What we'll do is we'll go ahead and take off the, oh. we're gonna remove this. We're gonna remove this side because I wanna get these uh, synchroni synchronization screws out. The thing about these is when Honda designed the motorcycle, you see there's little tabs on here. They had very specific um, ways that they wanted the carburetors to work. So this is basically how you control the very fine adjustments on the uh, on the carb. That being said, over the years, as parts you know wear together and everything like that, they're they're you're going to end up having to uh, adjust out of the original spec. So what I'll do is when these come out. I'll remove these plastic tabs so that uh, so that I can adjust them more effectively. You heading out? See ya. Those guys go there. Karen works at the movie theater that I used to work at back in the day, the Baghdad Theater here in Portland. It is a gorgeous old theater built in 1927. But uh, I moved on from there. And now I sell restaurant equipment. But not crockpots. this support bracket that back here as well and then we'll take out these adjustment screws now these will have a little washer and a spring typically so it's a very fine little adjustment I'll put those guys there I guess I didn't really need a screwdrivers faster though Oh, there's one of the springs. We'll dig out the other ones. Maybe a little pick here and pull these guys out. Spring. Okay. 
Come on. Come on, baby. And spring and one more spring. There we go. And look in there and we can see. I don't know if I can get down in there and get them. I need to get a longer pick. Hey, what's up? How you doing, Zop? Good to see you, buddy. I is the greasy. I was just about to grab a different pick to uh, get the washers out of these little bastards. Let's see. Does I have one handy? Do I have one handy? Can never find anything when I want it. All right. You guys wait here. I'm just going to go... Uh, Back. So let's see. Yeah, down to 36% on the battery. So the pick must be in here. I'm just not seeing it, but I do need it. So let's see. Where is it? So many piece of shit tools, you know. Yeah, let's see. Maybe I can get it with that other pick. Tyler was, hey, hey, what's up, girl? Two of my favorite peeps. How's everything going? Aw, that's very sweet. I just started doing this uh, bullshit. Rebuilding this, uh, a, um, oh, Jesus. Sorry, I'm bend that up a little bit. Rebuilding that thing over there. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, the two people who are uh, in chat right now are Talia and Tyler. They are good friends of mine, dear friends, and uh, who I haven't had enough time to chat with recently, and I do regret that. But uh, yeah, good people. Oh, okay, so there's two washers and an o-ring so we're still missing a washer and an o-ring an o-ring and a washer and an o-ring let's see if i can't get in there and move them around a little this thing just isn't long enough i need a i need a longer pick do, do, do. we can do it with one of these uh do it with the actual jet <laughs> That'll do it. Slip this over. All right, so that's three washers, three O-rings, which means we are still missing one set. Still, I do, uh, I do miss you guys, and I do apologize for not spending more time. You know how it is, but I always think about you. All right, there is one more washer, 
and one more o-ring all right all present and accounted for so take all four of those guys and all four of these guys and put them all right in along with the spring that somehow motated over so those are all out let's see is there anything else that i'm missing uh yeah reggie what are you doing buddy hi i just mowed the grass so ricky's like woohoo party down bitches all right so everything is out of here so i mean it's really to the point where i can go ahead and split them so we're going to go ahead and take the bracket off of this side just loosen all these up first These screws and that one. So I picked up a uh, an ultrasonic cleaner, a 10 liter ultrasonic cleaner, which is big enough to fit all these guys in. And I talked to a buddy of mine who's who does a lot of carb rebuilds, and uh, he suggested a specific chemical for just such an operation. So I ordered it from a local company, and they were like, "Yeah, in stock, no problem." So I went down there the next day. They're like, "Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, it's actually not in stock. We have to order it. It'll be here in two weeks." That was disappointing. So I need to come up with some other uh, some other plan for chemicals. Because uh, I'm not waiting two weeks to clean these fuckers. All right, so there's our other bracket. Now, flip this back over. See, now, this is all held together with fuel tubes. This is where the main fuel comes in. And then there's metal tubes that connect these two right here. The opposite side is what maintains the... Uh, the throttle between all three these are all kind of just married together and then there's also a couple of breather tubes that typically would be right here but they're they, they would hang out here they're missing so i will have to uh figure out a way to uh find some of those so we're going to start on this side so that i can keep an eye on these springs and what we're going to do is just go ahead and kind of pull these apart Looks like the, met the middle one wants to come out first. So this spring lives underneath this piece right here. Now, if I, ju I just really don't want this fucker to just fly. All right, so there's that one. That is right there. So here's half, and here's the other half. All right, so I can pull out interesting hmm. these uh these cards typically will have an indexing slot which i don't see on here so that's kind of interesting i'm going to take a photo of that right quick because i'm going to want to remember where that shit lives so it's pointing back toward the butterflies on the diaphragm side go okie doke so we'll put these guys back over here this guy can come on out so I'll be replacing all of these gaskets which and this is half of the reason why you take these things apart is because like this gasket right here is 
not in the best condition. I'll we'll pop it back on here just so I can keep an eye on it. But uh, yeah, all this will be cleaned out. And ready to roll this one. We'll separate these two. Keeping an eye on the spring because it is going to want to jet. And there's also a spring between these two. I'm going to keep an eye on. Let's get this spring back up in here. There's something that I'm actually kind of curious about. I had thought that these uh, these may have not been ever taken apart, but I'm kind of curious now because the springs that live here, the one that's on this side, doesn't seem to be the right size. I find that kind of curious. I don't know. It is. It's fine. It's the. Uh, it's because this goes in there. It's fine for that. That one's bigger because it doesn't have. And then this guy lives between here and here. That. Like. Right there. Which I will take a picture of as well. Gotta take pictures. Put that there. Pull this guy out. Yeah, these guys are definitely due for some cleaning. And that's uh, this guy. For the uh, tube to atmosphere for breathing. That's one that's entirely naked. And this one is also good to go. So that one. And then these two, go ahead and separate them out. And that spring goes there. There. These springs are sketchy at best. This one particularly. So I'm going to want to keep an eye on that. I might actually just pull it out and put it in here so it doesn't get lost. This one seems like it's pretty cool. It'll probably stay. This guy comes out. This guy comes out, and there they are. All right, see you, Han. Love you. So that's four carburetors separated and ready to be cleaned. So that's kind of what the, the plan was for today. So, mission accomplished. Um, probably going to uh, just uh, get ready to put all this stuff in the, uh, in the tank and uh, get it all cleaned up. I do have rebuild kits, so I will be rebuilding these, putting them all back together with all new gaskets and everything like that. And I will most likely stream that. That one's going to be sketchy as fuck because... Putting them back together is a lot harder than putting them, taking them apart, as anybody would probably know. But, uh, yeah, so I'm probably going to uh, call it a day for this one. I know it's kind of short, but there's, uh, you know, there's only so many things that I can do. I mean, I guess I could probably throw a caliper on the bike. I have one of those I need to put on there. But, uh, Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll swap the battery out and then come right back. 
So give me a minute, I'm gonna swap out the battery and I will come back and maybe we will install the left caliper on the front wheel. All right, talk to you soon.